Welcome back. <laughs> you doing chapstick? No, start over. No, I'm. Oh, okay. We'll you go it. ahead. Well, you do it then. While I'm, I'm doing letting it. the people know that I'm ready. Okay. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm Will, and I'm joined by my co-host over here, the Grease. Say hello, Grease. What's up, everybody? Will, before we get started, I have yeah. a word you need to teach me. Okay, I hope I know it. Happenstance. Happenstance? Like, it just, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know if I could define happenstance. Right. But happenstance means like oh, just kind of... Oh, that's happenstance. Yeah, just like, kind of something just kind of happens. It's like um, it's something unplanned, maybe. Oh, that's... That's like happenstance. Okay. Uh, Let's that, Google the definition. Okay. Um, I mean, I didn't mean to produce the episode, but <laughs> here we are, folks. Happenstance, meaning chance or a chance situation, especially by one one producing a good result. Yeah. Okay. So a synonym so would be like a coincidence. is what it should say. Well, no. Happen chance. Like saint, well, sure. But That's then, what it should but say. But then you could just say by chance. I just don't understand why we don't say by chance anyway. Okay, why'd you ask about happenstance? Because it's a stupid word. It's like, oh, that's happenstance. I think there's a happenstance whiskey. Really? I thought that's where you were going. I thought you were going to surprise me. and like, I picked up something for us to drink. No, no. <laughs> Grease needs to go to the store, though. Yeah, we haven't done that. In, you haven't gone to the store in years. Yeah, I know. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling real good about it. Yeah, happenstance whiskey. Straight bourbon whiskey. What's it? okay? So tell me about it's that. Like fifty-seven dollars for uh, the okay. Founders Edition. I've seen this in the store, but the, the Founders. Okay, so like a limited yeah, that's edition what it looks for fifty-seven like. dollars. That's what it looks like. You've seen that on the shelf. I like that. It looks like a spade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my! My oldest daughter. It actually looks like a diamond. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> that's a diamond. Looks like a spade. Well, okay, so I was at Dollywood riding roller coasters with my oldest kid. And we were riding this mystery mine or whatever. You do this vertical thing, and then you f do the corkscrew, and then like this upside-down thing. And she goes, Dad, my heart became a spade. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because it just like compressed and well, came just, out the top. Just turned. Inverted. Yeah. She also has a new word. Happenstance? No. What, golly, what was it? Another one you'll have to get defined by me? <sighs> no. You normally call me. You're like, um, hey. It's something like terrifying, but it's not terrifying. It's mm. some weird word. Oh. Did she make it up, or is it a real word? No, it's a real word. Okay. Yeah, I've heard it before, All but right. not from her. We're, we're going to have a little homemade Dusty. Tonight. A homemade dust. So a homemade dusty is something that uh Grease bought a long time ago, has been sitting on his shelf and untouched. Oh and yeah. So is therefore very dusty. So uh, this is just to kick us off as we just chat through the show. But this is little Wathen's barrel proof that was picked by Elixir. Yeah. Our buddy Tarak down at Elixir. This is barrel number twenty eight. Uh this they says, didn't do too many of these, by the way. They did like twenty five barrels this year. Per year? No, the the year oh. that this came out was yeah. like 25 barrels, then the Eclipse was one. Well, like, no, they all came out that year. Well, no, what you're thinking of was the Medley single barrels, and those were the blue. Well, I guess the Wathen, the Eclipse was a Wathens, but they did do Medley single barrels first, and they only did like 10 of them, and each Medley family member picked one. And I had one of those, and it was unbelievable. And it was one of probably one of the rarest bottles I ever owned. But then they you started. Still have that eclipse I gave you? Yeah. You love me for that, don't you? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And I have one I'm saving for my daughter when she turns twenty one. Because... Didn't you kiss Samantha or something for the first time during an eclipse? No, she started labor basically mm. during the eclipse, and so we had our first kid. Okay, you not can't plan not that twelve hours later. You so. can't plan that. Like, no, you beautiful. could have planned, I'm going to tell her I love her during yeah. the eclipse. No, but it's so, like, I have the newspapers from the That day. was a real dark day. My, <laughs> my daughter was born, and it has the eclipse. We're on the, all the front page because it was, you know, newspapers come out the next day. Right. And so that was all the front page. Plus, I have an eclipse bottle for her, and I have the eclipse glasses, like, sitting on it that we use during the eclipse. And, like, um, you know what, like, those Facebook trends that, ladies do like show your last bump picture you know that yeah yeah i mean so, there's a lot of those so literally the last bump picture that 
for our daughter that my wife has is her with eclipse glasses on looking up at it and she put eclipse glasses on her belly uh it's samantha it's that's cute it's samantha, classic. that's that's pretty cute yeah samantha. so anyhow but then the wathens barrel proof they started this uh basically releasing for the barrel program um, I believe Wathens has a higher malt content in it. Yes. And uh, yeah, so these are like $60. And like you said, I don't know. They're not like, it's not like you see them everywhere. I don't know if they still have the barrel program or not, but I really liked these when they came out. Our buddy Justin picked some great ones because we were kind of on that um, that Wathens train for a little bit. Justin and and Bearded Ram, Dan, mm-hmm. um, he, he had yeah, a good Dan, palette for uh, these. There's like a Wahoo one. Yeah, somewhere I've got. Anyhow, I saw this and I said, huh, homemade Dusty. It's I mean, it's an opened Dusty. So this isn't one you'd buy at an estate sale and not drink, but just get for the cool bottle. But it's got it's a nook age. Thing. <laughs> it just sounds inappropriate for some reason. <laughs> yeah. It's nook aged. <laughs> it's nook aged. Yeah. Oh, man, that smells good. Yeah, it though. does smell good. I don't like it. Yeah, it does smell good. So you, uh, we're still here. It and, needs and, a little air, but <laughs> <laughs> fortunately, last weekend we mentioned that degrees had ripped up all the carpet, but the in the audio quality, you couldn't really hear the echo that much. The, okay. the processing took it out. Okay, so, okay. Uh, so we're still doing all right with that. It's just when I get loud, it, it kind of sounds like we're in an empty like fellowship hall. You know, it's like we expected people to show up. We had a, a Wednesday night church supper podcast performance we're yeah. doing and no one came why didn't you so. why didn't you take that opportunity to say potluck well because it wasn't a potluck because well, then we wouldn't get to eat because no one would what was it called anything. bring a dish or something like that covered dish a covered dish that's what they yeah it's the same it. thing as a potluck yeah. <laughs> right, right 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 yeah like covered dish. like dude that was <laughs> like make sure you cover it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you have to remind people how to transport it like potluck you get it's like it's um everyone brings something and it's kind of like luck of the draw because you don't know what other people are bringing so that one makes more sense covered dish is giving instructions on how to transport the yeah. food you're bringing Make sure you bring a covered dish. Well, it's a potluck with lids. Yeah. That's the difference. The pastor at the front is like, we're going to have our covered dish this Wednesday night. Yeah. Down in the fellowship hall. We really would love everybody to attend. Now, remember, if you're coming, you just <laughs> need to bring a enough dish. food to feed your family. Therefore, other people, you know, can everybody just so that everybody can eat. Yeah, you know? right. You got to make sure you bring enough food. Yeah. And then there's always the people that like ran by Publix and just got like a one like small size potato salad. Yeah. You know what I would like, do? Like, oh, we forgot. You know what I would do in a pinch? What? Get one of those six foot long subs at Subway. Oh, yeah. And But I'd strut in and be like, this feeds my family of five. Well, not fully. We're still a little hungry after. Yeah. <laughs> we eat a lot of subs. There's not enough protein in there. Way too much yeah. carbs. And dairy. So I went on uh, uh, what's now going to become an annual fishing trip. This is my second oh, year Oh, that in a row. fishing trip sounded amazing. Yeah. So Airbnb was, you paid $74 yeah. <laughs> a night? No, I paid $74 total. total. Yeah, it was like 30, 37 technically a night, I think, per person. <laughs> and you only did two nights? I only did two nights because I had to get back for Monster Jam. Mm-hmm. And by the way... Henry wore his hat backwards at Monster Jam to, and told me, I'm Mr. Matt. Mm-hmm. So Matt mm-hmm. uh, is the only adult male that my son has ever seen with a hat on backwards. So when he turns his hat around, he goes, yeah, I'm Mr. Matt. His his swimming lesson instructor had a hat backwards and he... He, he just had it. a hat on. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And he said, you look like Mr. Matt, which he kind of did. He has like a, a darker beard and looks like a 40-year-old man, so... Okay, one, I look 50. <laughs> I was being kind. Two, he looks like 32. He may be 32. I don't know how old he is. Um, but yeah, so we went out to East Tennessee to the South Holston River. Our buddy Jay, who he invited me last year. It's like a group of guys from his church that goes. And they've been, some of them have been going for like eight years to this spot. Jay's gone like four or five, and this was my second year. He invited me to come along last year. It's a fly fishing trip. Um, South Holston River is a tailwater in Bristol, Tennessee. I drove by the motor speedway on my way there and took a picture and sent it to our buddy, that? Dustin Pede. 
Well, Dustin peed. I know, but how did you feel about it? I felt great. That's, Dude, that's so like, Americana. That's like race royalty. Oh, I know. Well, that's what I mean. Like, and when you're driving by, especially um, the route, like you're just kind of on a rural road, and then all of a sudden you're like, "Whoa!" There's the motor speedway. Oh, okay. So uh, kind of. Well, well, I mean, I guess Talladega is on a highway. Yeah, because I twenty, you can see yeah. the raceway from I twenty. It is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like it is. you could happen upon it if you were coming from south of it and be like, w- "This where?" Oh, I. Didn't you know what's it. coming though for five miles because that American flag so big is the biggest American right. flag I've ever seen. Yeah, so I was I drove by Bristol Motor Speedway and then like the cabin is only like ten minutes ish from there, and. Uh, it's actually on the river, so it's there's like a main house, and then so y'all just walk down to the river every day. Well, then there's like other spots we'd go to as well, but like the main house, and then also on the property is like a little like double wide kind of trailer that's it's clean and nice and comfortable, has AC and a kitchen and a patio. Like, um, so y'all were in a mobile home, yeah, and so there was. Uh, Five of us in Glad the, the weather was fine. Five of us in the in the second house, and then there was Lord knows how many people in the other house. Like there, I think there was over ten people um, easily on the trip. But we base it's like the most perfect time because like I got there at Thursday at one, didn't even go to the house, went straight to up by the dam and met our buddy Jay there, and immediately like got out of the truck, got in my waders, and was in the water within like. 10 minutes of pulling up after driving four and a half hours. <laughs> so got in the river. So y'all didn't for ride a long together. time. No. Mm-mm. Oh, that's right. You had to get back for, uh, Monster for Monster Jam. Yeah. So I fished until the evening until like they were generating the dam, went back, fished down by the house. Cause it takes like the water when they release water, it takes three hours from it to get just a couple miles down from where the dam is to the, where the house is like it takes a while so you can once you gotta get out of the water there because they're releasing water you can go and still fish for three more hours further downstream so it doesn't like completely just you doesn't ruin your your day day. and then by the time if if it's for some reason you still want to go fish then by that time you can go back upstream to the dam and fish there again because that they aren't they don't generate a ton out of it it's not like a heavy demand power dam so did that, then uh, grilled. Yeah, the, uh, Jay brought his blackstone, so I like uh, th- seared steaks on the blackstone. Yeah, he was made telling- homemade fries, and like it was oh, it was incredible. And then that's not that's not a fishing trip when you you bring a a, a blackstone grill. Oh, it's so good! Like here is my uh, dinner first. Like maybe night. a mini charcoal grill. This was my dinner first night. Okay, well that looks amazing. I know it was incredible. It was just like steak, steak potatoes, I cut up, a, cut up uh, potatoes into like squash. fries and some squash. Did it on the blackstone. I by accident bought. I bought a stick of just one stick of butter because I didn't need that much. I was only there for two nights, and I just grabbed like a single stick of Kerrygold, like that real good good yeah. butter. Yeah. But it was like the garlic herb one. I didn't oh, read no. it. No, but it ended up being perfect. Oh, that on the, the steak fries. and on the potato, like it was perfect. Now we probably yeah. wanted on other things, but it was it was like a good happy mistake. Right. With that up, on some salmon. Get up the next morning, go fish as long as we wanted, and then go back and cook. And then hang out, drink by the fire. I took a bottle of Russell's Man too, that we all killed that weekend. Um, and everyone, I took those little metal uh, tasting glasses, the snoot glasses. Yeah, and those were a big hit. Everybody was asking where they could get those because oh. that is great for like a, especially if you're outside, if you're going sitting around a fire, like not having something glass that you could just drop right. or break or kick right. over. Big hit. Everybody asked about those. And then I f- we fished all day Friday, and then Saturday morning I had to drive back to take Henry to Monster Jam, and so I just got up and fished for like an hour or two right outside the house. And the water, the water's like forty five to fifty degrees, like it's pretty cold, especially up by the dam. It's probably low forties. Downstream, it's higher forties, low fifties. And I was I was getting up. They were all leaving to go 
um, up to the dam and I was going to head out and I was like, man, I want to fish for a little bit, but I don't really feel like putting on my waders and getting everything set up. And I, I may just head out. And one guy goes, just go out there and like in just your shorts. He goes, it'd feel great. And I was like, that's a really good idea. And so I did, I just had on some like Chacos and some shorts and went out and the, and at first it's a little cold, but then you get used to it. And because it was still, it's still really hot over there. It was like mm -hmm. 85, 90 degrees, sun beating down. You got regulated, but it felt so good. Also like woke you up before having to drive four and a half hours. It felt incredible. So I fished there for a little bit. How had the water more. come up? Um, at the, that it's pretty low, like right outside the house. So yeah. a lot of times it's like up to your calf. And then I got like mid thigh. Um, so getting, getting close to the danger zone. Yeah. I mean, I thought about just doing a little squat seats just to, just wake, to, up, get it just to wake up, but a little I dip. Didn't. Um, a little dip. And so we had it, but I mean, like I said, that's what they call that mine. Was great. And then I, I caught, <laughs> caught, a, <laughs> caught one final rainbow and I was like that. Okay. I'm good. I'm done. Yeah. I don't need to sit out here any longer. Caught one last fish, let it go. Got in the truck and headed back home. So it How was fast really from the time you got done with that fish to being in the car driving home. Um, 10 minutes. Like I already had everything packed up. And so I just made sure I did a once around in there and I had like a bat, two bags still in the, um, yeah, it's called a dummy check. And yeah. Did the dummy check. Yeah. Just grabbed those, threw them in the truck, grabbed a bottle of water out of the fridge, and I was on the road. Did you pay for those waters? They were mine. You left them there for them? No, I was the last one I had. <laughs> but, yeah, so it was a great Dude, trip. Dude, you're a really planner. Cool, That's really, really cool good. Guys. Really cool guys, too. So yeah. it was super fun. I know a few of them. Talk to uh, – yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. So it was it was fun. We had a great time. That's awesome. Uh, so how did everybody like the Russells, man? Loved it. And everyone was like, so I can just go get this, this is Russell Reserve. I go, no, no, you can't just go get this. <laughs> no. They're like, explain this to me. And so that was it was a really cool um thing. That was <laughs> Did you feel like you were talking to me? No, they were much smarter than you. Yo, but they didn't know that. Well, that's true. But did you have to explain it to to them like you told me? Well, they were probably more interested in actually learning what I was saying than you would be. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Like there's sometimes a difference you'll ask me a question and, and I'll tell you something and you're like, I heard that, but I'm not, I'm not, didn't listen. Right. They were like, oh, that's really fascinating. And then, um, one guy, he was really nice. This was his first year, I think to come to, but he, uh, he, it was, it was funny. We were talking a little bit and someone had told him that I, I do the podcast. And so he was, he likes bourbon. He brought a bottle of Frank August, which have you had that? Mm -mm. It's pricey. It's like 90 bucks, but it was really good. Mm. I know that um, our buddy, Eric, the whiskey mutant, he loves Frank August. And so we drank a little bit of that, but he was like, what are five bourbons that I may not know about that I should go get? Which that was kind of a fun little thing. That's and a great question. It that, wasn't like it's not like it, what's your favorite? Exactly. Verb? Yeah. He was like, "What are five things that may not be on my radar that I should go get?" And like one, I he had ne he clearly had gotten Frank August, which is one that's you know a pricier bottle and it, it's there, but um, he's never had Old Granddad Bottle and Bond. So I was like, "Old Granddad Bottle and Bond." That's your go-to. Um, I said Four Roses Small Batch Select. Yeah. Uh, I said, I said Gypsy, the Explorer series. Interesting. Because if you can find it, I think it's something people would be surprised by. Yeah. And then also you're going to have something that probably no one else has had. And what I'm about just, Henry McKenna? Uh, I didn't say that because I, I, in my head, and I don't know if this is true anymore, but remember how big Henry McKenna got. And it's still kind of hard to find now still even. Yeah. That I, I, but, I see it a lot, but, but I feel like because it had that peak, people may not know about it now that have gotten into bourbon later mm. because it was just not available for so long that people didn't really know about it. And that is such a good value. So that's one that I should like revisit. Like, have you ever had Henry McKenna, you know, to people, but yeah. um, what and else did I 10 say? 10 year bottle and bond heaven. Oh, heaven. I said 13th colony rye. Um, yes. Which is always a favorite. Yes, mine. That's and then a good one. I also said the hard truth rye, that small batch, that sweet mash. Um, you've had it and it's really I'm, good. Yeah. I it. mean, it, 
sounds familiar. But it's it's out of Indiana, but it's not MGP. They make it themselves. I think it's out of Thirteenth Colony Nashville. Rye is a good one. So That's yeah, so one. I gave him five solid things, and then he, I like told him it, and he goes, hands me his phone. He's like, Could you just write those down? Yeah. <laughs> so did you did um has he had stuff like Jack Daniels Barrel Proof Single Barrel? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think we talked about that. Okay, because that one is a. Hitter. I, I yeah, I do say that one a lot to people. Oh, my brother in law. Because a lot of people just know Jack number seven and that's it. Yeah. Or gentleman's Jack. So like, that's what they my brother in law, uh David, he's he's actually started listening some to the podcast. Um but he um he's he will I'll let him try some stuff when he's at our house, like when he comes to visit. He's the one that just had a baby. And last time I sent him back with a few things uh, to try. Um, I sent him with like Evan Williams, 1783. Uh, I sent him with a um, a couple store picks that I just had duplicates of. Um, I think one was like a Starlight. Uh, a couple of things like that. And he really enjoyed them. But he loves Knob Creek Single Barrel, the 120. And so oh, yeah. he... Um, he's like, I think I like stuff that's a little higher proof, a little bit more flavor. And I go, yeah, yeah, no, that's, you're exactly right. Um, and he texted me the other day that he'd gotten a Jack Daniels barrel proof single barrel. And he's like, this is so good. I was looking for something that was higher proof. It was higher proof. I go, you did the exact right. I go, but that's the, I think his was like 130 something. So it was really only 10 higher than Knob Creek. But yeah. I'm like, those are so good. Like you absolutely did the right thing. And I love those. So yeah, um, man, those, those whew. single barrels, man, even, even the lower proof ones are great. Oh man. I had one from the distillery that was like 122. Like it was a yeah. lower and it was so good. Where are our little bottles? They're at my house. Both of them. Yeah. Right. Pretty sure. I was like, they're I, either I they're either both in my house or they're in the storage unit. But I'm pretty sure they're well, both. In both my house. of those are secure at this point. No, they are secure. They are not here. I had right. them. Yep. Great. Because so. clearing out the basement, with you carpet could not, situation. Could not find them. Well, I just thought about it and was like, hmm, I've never seen those. This is one twenty seven point nine proof. Ton of flavor, but I think the airtime as being a homemade dusty has uh, really has, done well. Has done really good things for it. Uh huh. I could drink a lot of that. Yeah, it, I mean it. It feels one twenty ish. Um, yeah, but there's not a huge burn. Like it feels just very well developed. It, the burn is almost. <laughs> I I compared it to like carbonation. Like it was a cola. Okay. Like a that's little, the uh, kind of burn that fizz. I had. There were 75 barrels of 75 whatever year barrels. this was that they released them. You mentioned you thought there were 50. But there were 25. Oh, the I ecl- thought you said 50. The, but the Eclipse bottle was a part of a lot of 25. Got it. Yeah, this says... Um, this was 2018. Is that when it was? Mm-hmm. Jeez, that's six years ago. Yeah, dude. Homemade Dusties, baby. Homemade Dusties. Dude. 174 bottles of barrel proof. That's a lot. Yeah. I wonder what the age is. It's got to be. Guessing it's got to be younger. Yeah, I, I would I'm assume six. Because there's no way you're going to get 174 freaking bottles out of a barrel if this thing's 10 years Unless old. Unless it was like in cold storage for <laughs> That's true. Oh, five of the see, years. Uh, the Eagle Rare 25 year. Ten thousand dollar bottle. That yes, <laughs> it was in the in the in vault. The, the vault, yeah. Which we've seen, yeah. Which is a cool concept, but it's still at the same time, it's you're drastically slowing Not the vault. Down. What is it? It's it. There is a vault. Sorry, with yeah, all but the things, I call it the vault because it has like a bank vault it, door. It like, does uh, the the cryo chamber. Something what I like to call it. Yeah. I, you know, I love that concept, and it's really cool to see those really old barrels in there. But at the same time, it's not. It's not, it is, it is it, technically and in reality that old, but they're drastically slowing down the aging process right. by climate controlling it. Well, because they don't, well, one, they'll lose a lot if it's hot. Yeah. For it, aging and it'll just it be 25, in, in 30 years. Summers and then cold winters is going to. It does a lot. I mean, that's what aging is. The aging isn't just touching the wood. Right. The aging is the barrel breathing 
in and out whiskey for years. Yep. And, and, hot, so and hot air, it opens up pores. Expands in the, wood, the barrel. Sucks cold, it in. Cold pushes it back colder, out. pushes it out. Squeezes it like a sponge. Yeah. So and that's where it gets its color. But if it, if I almost wish they, and some, some um, distilleries in their warehouses, they call it heat cycling, where they will climate control, like change the temperature hot and cold uh-huh. to try to, to maneuver it a little bit. I mean, they, for as long as there's been whiskey, people have been f- trying to find ways to make it taste older faster. Right. This is the opposite. This is trying to make it taste <laughs> taste younger, <laughs> longer. Even though it's still ultra age whiskey, but does that make sense? Like, oh, you're yeah, still yeah, you're yeah. trying to make it you're taste slowing. like an 18 year old whiskey that's 25 years old. Because yeah. at the end of the day, a 25, 30 year, I mean, some 25 year bourbons you've messed up at that point. Well, they're also sitting there like, you know, if business is super slow, right? do we have, or if it slows, do we have the ability to produce an amazing product that sits somewhere like that for 25, 30 years? Yeah. And that's what they're, I mean, it's cool. They, I mean, they don't have a ton of them. Right. That room is not It's not that large. So at the end of the day. Exactly. But dude, I, I remember seeing stuff in there from like, with the like a nineties mm-hmm. date, yeah, I can't remember what ninety it was, but dude, and, I mean, it's a matter of time. And by time nineties, we could calculate it that they're going to release a fifty-year-old whiskey, and it's going to be fifty thousand dollars, right? I mean, that's just that's the trajectory, right? Like, let's just let it still be because aging. Whatever by t- price point oh. they put out, it oh. gets bought, and there's not going to be a ton of it. So you also have to think about that is that... Well, that's kind of similar with the 25, but yeah. What they did with... That's kind of how they did the um, the rhetoric series is yeah. they they slowed it down. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so so that the, each year, yes, it was technically aged another year, but they, they kind of slowed that aging process with climate control. I don't think it was in a freezer mm-hmm. or a, a, a cold storage like the... Um, ones at Buffalo Trace, but it was a very similar process. But I mean, as soon as you tank it into something else, like you've stopped aging it. Right. So you can't technically call it 25 years old. Unless you bring it to the nook. And then you get nook aged homemade dusties. Mm-hmm. Man, the slogan heck is, of a product. The slogan is come and get the nooky. I was waiting for something like that. Yeah, it is. Hey, must be the decade. That's what the wrong song. That's what you say. No, but that's how you say it. Oh man. Well, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I was at the pool. Yeah, did you pull really hard again? I saw our buddy Clint Sample. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me about that. We went to Amendment Eighteen. Yeah, in downtown Franklin. It's a little speakeasy, and I saw that Joker. Uh, have five cocktails. Yeah. None of them are the same. He keeps getting whatever. The closest he came to getting the same cocktail is Karen got one severance pay. Mm-hmm. The the semi to the Manhattan. Right. And but a little spicier. It's got like this fire to it. I think it's because it's like a smoky scotch. Right. Lefroy is in it. Lefroy. Yeah. Um but he was like, if Karen doesn't like it, I'll get it. Okay. So he ordered something different. Well, Karen loved it, so he got a sip of it, so he never had it. So he finally ordered one with me. Got it. Prohibition coffee, hands down, everybody's favorite. Mm. Um, and I reached out to Zach Helton. Yeah. And I said, can you? Can we do an episode with you again mm-hmm. where we make a cocktail, but can it be Prohibition coffee? Because it's going to save me $1,000. <laughs> Like what do you I, say? I, I, I've had I've had five no I've had four of them yeah. in two weeks, yeah. And Lauren has had two of them. What did he say? Did he respond or he ghosted you? No, he did. He was res, he responded. I can't remember what I he said. That guy. I can't remember what he said. He's a good dude. It was something legal though. I'm pretty sure. Like, legal. Yeah, I don't know if I can say it. I don't know if I can say. You mean it was illegal? Well, no, he was just talking about we might have to move the show to R-rated if it's going to... Oh, 
It's because of what I said. Well, I need to see what he said. <laughs> uh, see, you, bro. <laughs> That's fair. So I think he's in. Okay, you yeah. just had to. You know, some people have to respond in certain ways. Well, some people have to because, initiate conversations in certain ways, Grease. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, some of some people really do want to be the mayor. Yeah. And you can't have that on your phone. So if I text you something, you must respond in some sort of way that cleans up. Yeah, and you just normally you just say, I do not approve. That's what you do. You say, I don't approve. I don't approve what? I, what you're saying. You say, I do not approve. That's all you say. That's a blanket statement. Yeah. You know, don't I, approve. Well, don't, well, I don't endorse dude, that. I am honored so much because you've never texted me, do not approve. You know what the problem is? Is that I've, it's not like anyone can say, there's no plausible deniability of my relationship with you. A hundred percent. It's out there on the internet. <laughs> it's way so, out there. And actually, I think I have explicitly said I do not approve of many things you say on the internet. So I think I'm covered. I could go back to like, how many times have I yelled at him? I'll, on the I'll, I'll say something questionable to him in text and he just will not respond. Yeah. He's just like, I don't. It's called ignoring it. I don't, I don't want that. Never saw it. <laughs> Plausible deniability. I have a filter. It deletes most things Grease says. He hasn't oh, figured out how to. Happenstance. He hasn't figured out how to beat the filter yet. So. You won't either. You will never figure it out. I'm never going to figure it out. I love this, by the way. This is great. Oh, it is great. I'm having my second point. Yeah, I think I've got a couple. Single Wathen's barrel Wathen's in there some at the house. I got to go. Yeah, I've got like three more of I these. I need to go open them up and let them sit for six years. I got three more of these. Man. Of that specific one? No. Okay. One's also, the, one's the Wahoo. Me. Yeah, which is the... Um, and maybe there's another one of these. I don't know. The, this is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I typically buy two of Elixir's barrel picks. Yeah, because... Like, if I like one, I'll be like, Dang, I'm a Yeah. All Thus right. the reason Yeah. I need I got rid of some picks. I know. Sold them all for fifty dollars each. I know. It was for the right cause. Made six grand. Your sanity. Did you really? Sure did. <laughs> Good for you. Well, neighbors were coming over and I had everything laid out and I was like, everything's fifty bucks. And there I sold uh four Knob Creek fifteen year olds. Oh, to uh, well, you looked at all of them first. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Because I'm pretty you, sure I did. You'd have been pissed off at that. No, it's all right. The Turks, you know, Adam Shelton. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they they bought them all. Adam was over here hanging. And he was like, "Hey, do y'all want these?" And they were like, "Yes," because he I gave him one, or he bought one, took it to a party with the Turks. The Turks had it and be like, well, "I need all of these." Yeah. So. They got them all. Well, I mean, that's a steal. For 50 I wasn't bucks looking for at like no, I know, but it's like I was just yeah, it's a steal. They got a really good, they they essentially paid retail for it, and that's what I was I was like, you know, some of these bottles, I, none of them were under. If they were under fifty bucks, I'd be like, yeah, dude, totally. That's thirty five or what? Well, like whatever it was, sure. But I didn't go above fifty. Yeah, I mean, those Knob Creeks you easily could have said they're fifteen years old. They they don't release these this age anymore, 120 bucks. And right. most people wouldn't bat an eye at it. And that's still probably a good deal. Right. Um, but well, no, like, that's good. Good like on it. you. And also you, you pocketed six grand. I did. And then you ripped up your carpets mm, and yeah. you ripped them up. Well, you know, I'm doing it all myself. I've I'm saving this. thousands of dollars. I've literally seen this. Yeah. I have to take one of those hand sanders to the sides oh gosh i'm gonna put up a gopro and you're not gonna know about it i got right here oh, i'll yeah. send you the footage there we go i'm just gonna post that dude post you don't it. think i've got a ring camera on my whiskey you're out of your daggum mind. was well, some people came in here and had remember when oh, they gave yep. me a two-ton ac unit right. for a basement and i remember two that. floors i remember it i had to get a four-ton unit it took me two years to get it yeah they came here and they were like in and out of this thing. So I freaking had it, it. It it was a lot of footage, but I recorded the entire three and, hour. And you process. had like the chime going off every time they walked by it just to let them know that there's like the ding a ling a ling. 
like motion. Well, one time I got on there, I was like, "Hey guys, thank you so much." Oh yeah, you Smart. just gotta let them know. Smart. Yeah, yeah you just gotta let them. Know. So, uh, but my, you, you hit them with kindness, like, "Oh man, that guy's cool." My we we set up like our son. We have like obviously still like a monitor in his room, but when we go over to like the neighbors um, to play cards and drink, yeah, we'll put. We'll put like a uh, like a Nest Cam or something like um, in the hallway uh, outside of the kids' room. And if it triggers, it pops you. Push Just so we know, especially like if my daughter gets up to go to the restroom and then comes downstairs, like she would freak out if she couldn't find us. <laughs> like literally would freak out, and and rightly so. Like I mean, I, I get that if you're a kid mm-hmm. and all of a sudden right. the parents aren't there. Totally. Um, so if we go next door for game night, we'll set that in there so that if there's movement. And we're we're twenty seconds from the door, right? So oh, it's I like, was just outside in the front yard doing something. Exactly. Well, funny you should say that. One night she came out and I booked it back, and she's like, "What are you doing in the backyard?" I was like, "I was just looking at something. It was just figuring just, something out. It's night out. It's nighttime. What are you doing out there?" I go, "Don't worry about it. Just go back to bed." Like I've I've had to do that and right. do that whole rigmarole. Um, but so Dude, we, what we, parents do just to get like two hours of fun. So we, uh, the other night, like, and we don't leave it out there all the time. Like in there, most of the time it's like, we take it down, but for some reason it's still up from our last game night. Like we don't leave that camera, like pointing at their rooms cause it's not necessary, but for some reason it was still up the other day. And, um, my son comes out of his room it's like 10 30 and when he comes out, he's coming down to come play. It's not like he's not going to the restroom. He's not doing it. He's coming out and he's up. So you have to go put him back to bed. And <laughs> so my wife talks through it and goes, Henry, go back to bed. And he marches over to it and stares it down. And he goes, you go downstairs, downstairs, you <laughs> <laughs> and we're like dying laughing because he's like, who, who knows what he's thinking? But he's like, he knows it's his mom's voice. So is he just delirious? I think so. Yeah, but he's that like, would make sense. He, but he's pointing at it. He's like, you, you downstairs. You go downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and just like dying laughing. He's a ghost. And so I like went up and put him back to bed. But it was just hysterical that he was like barking at it. You, you go downstairs. Like you're not allowed out here. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, it'll come at you. Well, I'm excited about the 15. Let's do the 15. You want to hit the 15? You want to do that? Oh, man. You want to get to that 15? <laughs> Dude, you want to go to the 15? Is that your second glass? Yeah. Okay, well, you haven't even... I fell asleep on the couch this afternoon. Oh, I did I'm too. tired. No, not today. It was like two weeks ago. Yeah. Last week. Uh, I hey, can't remember. You want to go to the 15? I would love to. Hit the music. There we go. <laughs> We're having some 2XO. You go downstairs. You go downstairs. I'm not even I'm not even playing. Hey dude, do you want to see the chord that I record bass with? Look at this thing, dude. Um dude, I can do I can move around so much. <laughs> Is that like a two foot chord, three foot chord, three feet? Uh that's a three foot. Hang chord. on, let me measure. About keep, two and a half. Keep, you got to keep. All right. Two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. How many is that up to? Oh, two and a half. 36. Yeah. <laughs> That's three feet. Um, is it going to? Do you know any info on this? No. Nah, Other than just Dixon does it? That's right. Dixon does it again. I've heard a hey, Well, we're, I, I won't comment on I can read on the back. All right. And we're back from the 15. Some say we never left, Will. All right. We've got the latest 2XO release. This yeah. is the Kiowa blend. So Kiowa is... Uh, I've heard really great things. Of the blend or of Kiowa? Well, I don't know what a so Kiowa Ki- is. Kiowa is like a resort community uh, outside of Charleston. Uh, Ki- uh, Kiowa. Ki- I th- what, what's Kiowa Island? It's Kiowa Island. That's how it's spelled. Kiowa, I've always we've always called it Kiwi. It's Kiowa, it's kind of like uh, like Sea Island in Georgia. Yeah, it's, it's the Charleston equivalent of Sea Island. Okay, so it's uh, outside of Charleston. It's like a private community. There's a club there, but you can also go just stay. Um, 
But Dixon uh, this is going to be very different. Vacations moment. there often, um, and so I'll read the back. Uh, the Kiowa Blend is the fourth release in the ongoing Icon series from Two XO Two Times Oak. Each release is unique, creating a blending created by blending select stocks of my finest barrels and crafted using my double barreling process. The Kiowa Blend is a nod to my happy place where I go with my family and friends to unwind and recharge. Sometimes you need to step off the grid. So that's uh, the Kiwa blend. I love it. It's got a palmetto, a little palm tree on there. Yeah, uh, that looks pretty good. And a little tribute to South Carolina. Dude, I love Beach Dixon. Beach Dixon's the best. Dixon. I mean, I've never gotten to experience No, it. you never will. I mean, I you might. can't you can't afford Kia with I could, I, Really? <laughs> no. Really? Yeah. Is it pricey? Yes. I didn't. It's like so. It's like it's like what Hilton Head used to be. Yeah, because Hilton Head's not right. Yeah, yeah. So is it like on? Uh, I can't remember what it is. It's another island, Sea Island. No, I'll get back to it. Fripp Island. Well, no, Fripp is kind of. It's not. I'm gonna say this: most of the islands you probably know. Have a little bit of Habersham in what them. What is it a bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you can't you can't tell me Myrtle Beach ain't awesome. Okay? <laughs> I go to Myrtle Beach Island. Myrtle Beach. Yeah. I go to Alvin's Island in Myrtle Beach. It's my favorite uh, shell shop. Dude, I just go where I can play 10 different putt-putt courses yeah. in two days. I get that. That's where, I, that's where I do it. And they better have mountains, all the things. Volcano, rivers. Oh, rivers. on the putt putt course. I thought you were talking about that beach I go to better have mountains. No, no, no. Or I'm no. not going. No, no, no. Pacific Coast only. Yeah. The mini golf course. Yeah. Smells great. Did you have you ever mm. um oh gosh, where is it? Oh, Gulf Shores. Yeah. There well, I don't know if it's still there. This was when I was in a band back in the day. But oh, it's fabulous. This tastes smoky. It's got a little campfire in the background. Yep. It's like you're having a beach bonfire. Um, that is different than anything I've ever had from Dixon. There's smoke on the end of that. Yeah, it's like a like a schmore. Yeah, like, like I a said, beach bonfire. Gulf Shores. They had a a mini golf with freaking real Bermuda sod. Oh, so it was like a, yes, yeah, like a real deal. Yes, yeah. and there was cameras everywhere, and if you messed up the grains, like you're. What's getting... the point at that point? Like, if you have to, you so know. a lot of a lot of like, uh, I don't know, like a lot of golfers will are more likely to come there and actually okay. play because it's more of a realistic experience. Yeah, I could see that, but then it's not for the kids. I mean, because my kids are going to be banging the grass with the club, with the putter. I think if Guaranteed. you don't bring attention to it, they won't know any different. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean if you're not banging the grass with the putter? <laughs> if you don't pay attention that you can take this and just smack it on the ground, your kids aren't going to do it. It's learned behavior. Most people don't know that you can swing a golf club. It has club in the name, but kids don't know that clubs for beaten. I remembered, and this is sort of kind of a whiskey story. All right. I just remembered. You were hammered playing. No. Playing putt no. Putt. I, was, I was in a text thread earlier today, and, I, and we were talking about uh, how our kid's elementary school teacher is like, we know she ratted out a lot of people when she was in school. Oh, one of those. One of those. She's like, we got rules. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. you do not break rules. Right. Well, I, I started thinking, I was like, When's the last time I ratted somebody? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought about it. It's when I was in a band. Mm. I'm not going to say who it was. It was Joey. No. It, we were at a family event of his, and it was Shane. It was like wiffle ball or something we were playing, and he ended up Had been Shane. punching me in my face. He punched me. And so... Uh, like... Like a real like for real, a real one, yeah. Like for a real one, like I okay. mean, he he wasn't like trying to kill me, but he was, but he was he, displeased. He, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he popped me one, and I was like, "What? Well, what did you do to warrant that?" Because you've got a very punchable face. I actually don't. 
I actually don't remember. Okay. I remember us playing wiffle ball on this hill. Why would you do that? Because I don't think these people are smart, Will. Okay. Okay, they are, they're not as smart as I am. <laughs> that's, that's, you know. Okay. But, so, I then, here's where the ratting out comes. Yeah. I'm so mad. I go, uh, I won't say anything. Shane. Names. No, it's not Shane. Oh, okay. Sh- Shane's, well, there's I the only never. two band main, it wasn't Courtney. No, it's She not, wasn't in the it's band. It's an old band. It's an old band. I basically said, so and so got a, got arrested last week for a DUI. And I looked at him and goes, There you go, bitch. And walked <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, it was great. It was Woo! great. That Joker couldn't go to a bar for months. Like he caught like his dad called all of the bars and they all had his number. And if he walked in, he got a text message. I know this because I was like, hey, man, do you want to meet up for a drink or whatever? Because it was like three or four years later. Yeah. We go in there, and we're sitting down, and we're grown men. Dude, we are we are 25 years old. Yeah. Okay? We're sitting down. I'm having like a burger, we're, and I'm having a beer. He's having a beer. His dad shows up, and dude treats him like he's 12. <laughs> he's just like, what are you doing here? He's like, we're just... We're just chilling, having a beer and eating. He's like, you supposed to be here? Like, just quit. Like, <laughs> he's like, just uh, stuff like that. I'm not supposed to not be here. <laughs> so, so he left his car. Like his dad wouldn't let him take his car, even though, cause he just can't trust him. So there was like an inch out of his beer. Like, and so, yeah, I guess this might could have been a play to be like, if you, but I had to pay for it all. <laughs> I was left. I was left with the bill, and I was like, "Oh God, did I just get scammed?" No, but he thing. hadn't. But he hadn't eaten or drank anything yet. If we, if we were at the end of the meal and we freaking just busted up in there and knocked it out, and I learned that he texts his dad like, "Hey, just come and get me." I can't. So his dad something. yanked him out of the bar. Yanked him out. Couldn't even hang out. Twenty five years old. Just. Whew. Put him in his own truck. Did he took have him a home. problem? Yes. Oh, okay. So you were an enabler at that point. Well, no, I don't know. I, I I didn't know of these issues. Sure. Like I didn't know the. You know, it's one thing to go and have a bunch of Jaeger bombs and Soco and all this other stuff. It's but another you were thing literally to go just having a burger and a beer. Burger and a beer. And uh, anyway, later on down the road, this Joker. Gets thrown in prison <laughs> for well, it might be jail. I don't know. It's one of the two, but he stole tens of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry from a retirement center. Allegedly, he was a maintenance guy. Allegedly, I don't know. He was convicted, <laughs> so you know. yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just trying to caveat everything. <laughs> yeah. So let me just. I mean, he. I re- I I really hope. That he, you know, you send him on lands that, the plane. And you sent like, him on that downward spiral when you yelled, "Joker got a DUI." Yeah. Well, he shouldn't have punched you, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's right. fine. Buy bar pass on the Kiowa blend. <sighs> How much is a hundred bucks? Hundred bucks. It's. The, uh, I'll tell you this: if you're looking for a traditional, every bit worth. It. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastically made whiskey, and if you're looking for like what you think of Dixon making. It's not it. This is a complete, it's not a sweet, smokier, smoky, earthier. dry red wine. Yeah. It's, it's really good. Yeah. I'll pay a hundred bucks. I, I'll pay a hundred bucks for anything Dixon makes any day, but I really do like this. Definitely this a good. red wine vibe. Definitely has yeah. some smoke. It's great. Dixon. It's good. Dixon. As always. I know that you go to Kiwa. Because you know I can't you go to Kingwa. You know I can't afford to go there and hunt you down. Okay, yeah. you sold Beaumont in because that's the only place I knew where you lived. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think. I'm gonna be. I'm going to the Commonwealth Stadium, Kentucky Wildcats versus Georgia. Versus Georgia. You want Casey? I know for, yes. I know for a fact Dixon is going to be there. I'll send him a heads I up will find you'll be there. And nah, man. Don't no, do it. no, he's going to bar the door. I know, but he's not going to lie in. 
I don't know. He's got man. that kind Casey's, of pull. Casey's got that swag to him. You know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't know who would win. I'll get through the gate. I don't know who. Would I don't win. know if I'll sit in my seat, but I'll get through the gate. I don't know who would win in a power move like showdown between Casey and Dixon. Dixon. I think. Ca- I don't know. I think Casey might be able to pull it. Are we talking about the whiskey industry? Or are we just talking about life working? Just life. life power moves. Well, Casey's got a pretty good power move. Yeah, he's he exudes power move. Exudes That's it. literally what he does. Exudes it. He oozes power move. All right, man. That's going to do it for this week on the podcast. If you want to hang out with us, we're about to go to a town hall. Uh, go to patreon.com slash the podcast. You can do town hall or virtual bar night so you get to hang out with us on the internet and drink and tell stories and elaborate on things that we wouldn't say uh, in a public forum. Uh, it's a little bit more non-public, even though it's still on the internet. Check it out. Yeah. Patreon.com slash the podcast and support us there or just send us $5 in the mail. Grease, we don't know Jack. I addressed an Aladdin doll on town hall one time, but we'll drink it. I did.